Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and another set of holiday cards for this year's holiday card series. For those not aware, I started the holiday card series a couple weeks ago. I forget when. <laughs> I'll have a link to it. Everything goes in a playlist. I've done a few already. I've actually been making and posting Christmas cards since July off and on. And then I did several last month um, for Stamped Amber, things like that. But the official series has started. I'll have a link to that playlist so you guys can check it out. And then I will just add to it. Um, I don't do scheduled days because... My life's chaos. The only schedule I've been able to keep to is my live streams, which are Sundays, 2 p.m. Central. Doing that. But uh, yeah, more Christmas cards. I went non-traditional. I used um, one of the new stamp sets that Picket Fence Studio released in October that Kelly Taylor designed. She designed a couple stamp sets for them. I'm using one of them today. I will be using one of her other one in future videos. So just stay tuned. And yeah, did some coloring, used some um, paper glaze, splattering, all the things, all the things, of course, of course. So if you keep watching, I will show you guys how I made these cards. So to start these cards off, I did the backgrounds first and I have just panels of A2 white cardstock and I just put them on my big waffle flower grip mat. And I wasn't going to do this originally. And then I was looking at this little set. This is the um, Candy Cane Christmas set by Kelly Taylor for Pick a Pen Studios. And there's a couple little stamps with snowflakes. Like they're just one little snowflake cluster and then one little snowflake image. And I was like, ooh, I should just stamp them randomly on this background because I can. <laughs> so that's what I did. I used uh, Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink in Dublin. So just kind of like a minty green color. And I stamped the little images multiple times, sometimes without re-inking them. So then you get, you know, the second generation, even the third generation without re-inking. So I've got just some variation going on in the background before I do any stenciling. So I just kind of stamped it. I already knew what stencil I was going to use and I decided to do everything a little a little off center. This this was intentional. <laughs> just just cuz. And then the stencil is the Picket Fence Studios Inner Glow stencil and it is sized for an A2 card front, you know, and meant to go in the center, but I was like, "Ooh, if I just offset it just just a little bit, you know, why not?" So, I applied the stencil over the background. And then I'm using um, paper glaze in Lux, paper glaze Lux in holly leaf green. And the paper glaze Lux paste have glitter in them and they're fabulous. I love it. And this color is very, not mint green, but not like green green, if that makes sense. Like it's kind of in between those colors which that's also why I was like ooh, this will work nice I'll do you know yeah some some different little shades of green kind of going for that sort of minty color and then pink and yeah yeah so I applied this over the stencil and then I immediately washed off my stencil paste like this any paste really either put your stencil in a container of water or wash it immediately because it, it's not worth trying to scrub dried paste off stencils especially glitter paste because they, they I swear they dry like cement um so I did all of that I set those backgrounds aside wash my stencil everything's good and then I'm going to stamp that candy cane image onto more of Simon's Smooth White cardstock and I'm using my Misty and I'm inking this up and stamping it with um, an alcohol friendly marker ink. So I'm using Simon's Intense Black Ink and stamping it a few times here because it is a brand new stamp so it hasn't been conditioned or anything and I want to get all that detail and once I get this stamped I'm going to color these in with my Spectrum Noir Tri blends. You could use Copic markers, any alcohol markers. I was also, while I was doing this, I was like, oh, this would look really pretty to heat emboss this in like gold on some watercolor paper and do just some simple watercoloring. Like, it's just, it's a really pretty stamp. I really like this. Like, Kelly, you outdid yourself. I love it. 
And I also love that this does not specifically need to be like a Christmas card. Like I kept it just holidays, so kind of open ended. And yeah, it's just it's just pretty because it's just it's a pretty candy cane with a pretty little bow and some little greenery and florals, and I love it. So that first little bit was the speed I color in real time because I do not color as fast as I show in my videos. I do actually show the the um, full length non sped up version, but that's on my uh, Patreon page. It's just a perk for them. And I ramble the whole time I do it. That's also what takes me longer to color because I, I talk to my peoples when I do it. <laughs> but anywho, um, the coloring is very basic for the most part. My typical kind of darkest to lightest sort of a thing. The, the candy cane I did in um, sort of a jade green, kind of winter green sort of a color. And then I added a very, very light, very light pale gray to the white areas to give it that bit of shading. And then pinks. I chose several different, like I used the magenta blend for these bows, which every single time I use some of these color combos with the Spectrum Noir tri-blends, like as it's wet, you know, because even though they're alcohol markers, it still takes just a little bit to dry, not very long. But when I'm like first applying it, first doing the blend, I'm like, oh, oh, mistake, not, not happy. And then when it's dry, it's like, oh no, this, these colors are perfect. Everything's good. Everything's good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was in a pink and green mood for this one. So I used, you know, the brighter, much deeper magenta blend for the bows, which ended up pulling into um, the other colors I chose, which weren't planned ahead of time. Honestly, you guys, I'm always flying by the seat of my pants. I don't plan the whole thing, like start to finish. Um, but I uh, picked raspberry. That's what I was going for. And Simon's Dull Pink cardstock, which I pull out later too. And then I went with lighter pinks for these little florals. These are, are these hellbore? I think that's what these are. I love me some florals. Don't ever ask me for the specific names of them 99% of the time because I don't have a clue. I'm just like, it's a pretty floral. <laughs> but I think that's what these are. But again, when it comes to florals and greenery and all the things, just creative license. Do what you want. Honestly, it's, it's, yeah, I, I don't worry about it too much. I, yeah, yeah, it's artistic license. So I color those in in pinks, just lighter pinks. And then I use a few different greens for the greenery because that just gives everything more, you know, definition, fun, everything. And I just, I did, I really just enjoyed coloring this entire image in and who knows, hopefully I'll get some time later on to like pull it out and yeah, do some heat embossing and water coloring and all the things. And then um, I thought I used a different shade of green for these little tiny leaves because I was like, oh, I'm just using one of my, because I have both the Spectrum R, the, the, the ones with the brushes, that's the, I prefer the brush tips. And then I do have all the ones with the bullet nibs, which you guys don't see as often because I'm not a fan of them. I just don't like coloring with bullet nibs. But anyway, it was the same. <laughs> it was the same colors I used for the candy canes. It was the jade green uh, blend that I used for the little ones. So either one's going to work. And then um, I went with reds for the little holly berries just because that pop of red just worked. And then um, some darker pinks for the little, little berry images. And then some kind of golden yellow colors for the flower centers. And then fussy cutting. This... This stamp set does not have a coordinating die set. Her other, the other set that Kelly did for Pick a Fence does. It's a bigger set. It's the one with the cupcakes. It's, again, it's adorable. Um, it has a coordinating die set. This one doesn't. I don't mind fussy cutting. This honestly didn't take me very long. Again, I have been fussy cutting for 20 years. It just is what it is. I, I included this footage because for once I was actually able to do this on camera. I just find it easier to just, I'm usually holding it like right up to my face. <laughs> You know, and I just zone out and do it. My biggest tip of advice, I one, I do actually have like how to fussy cut stamped images. I have a video from like 15 years ago or something. I forget how many years. I think it's close to 15 years on my channel. Same rules apply. Basically, you just need a good pair of detail scissors. I love these little cutter bee ones. There's other many, many other scissors on the market that work great. Um, and then you see I cut more towards like the inner opening of the scissors. I don't really use the tips of them. That gives me smoother cuts. And I move the paper more than I move the scissors. And this is sped up. 
in editing. However, this took me less than five minutes to fussy cut each one, like all together, like under under 10 minutes to fussy cut these. It didn't take long, but you could also skip the fussy cutting completely and just stamp these onto, you know, a background and keep it a little more, you know, clean and simple. But you guys know I like I like dimension and and adding 15 other elements. That's just what I do. Speaking of, I could not find any stickles. I could have sworn I still kept a bottle or two of it around here, but also my I just I have an absolute disaster and I keep moving things around in an attempt to clean and organize and then I forget what I'm doing. And yeah, anyway, haven't used stickles in forever. So I wasn't surprised I couldn't find any, but I did find these little bottles of, I have this Lawn Fawn uh, Sparkle Glaze, kind of very similar to stickles, really. I purchased, I don't know how long I've had this. I purchased it when Lawn Fawn released it last year. I think they only came up with this last year. I forget. Anyway, it works like stickles. It's pretty. It's pretty and has sparkle in it. So I just kind of dabbed it on. I didn't completely cover everything with it. I just wanted it for the little extra texture and sparkle. So I just, you know, dotted it on for the most part because that's what I would have done with stickles as well and then with that bottle I was like "Ooh, I also have this Lawn Fawn clear glaze haven't used that let's try it out so I will say that Lawn Fawn's clear glaze is very but this is also remember this has been sitting for like over a year <laughs> so I'm not sure that what the consistency is meant to be but it's very thick like if I was to rate the thickness between this, there's the Nouveau Crystal Glaze, which I've used in past videos like forever ago, and Glossy Accents. I would say this Clear Glaze is the thickest in consistency. Glossy Accents is after that. And then the Nouveau Crystal Glaze, yeah, I think that's what it was called, is the thinnest consistency. Just so, you know, just for whatever info, if that helps you. So... I just applied those, the the clear glaze to the like the holly berries and the other little berry images, just again, dabbed it on. And then I carefully applied white gel pen um, accents because nothing is dry. <laughs> so I was aware of like where my hand was and what I was doing. So I don't like smear all of this, but I always say, and it still applies, you always want to apply white gel pen last if you're, you know, Normally you let everything dry regardless and then apply your white gel pen because the white gel pen can actually get dissolved. If you apply crystal glaze, clear glaze, glossy accents, etc., on top of it. So I added my little white gel pen highlights and then set those aside to dry. And of course I came back to these backgrounds and wanted to add splatter to them because that's just what you do. So I put the backgrounds into my splat box and I grabbed some picket fence, or not picket fence, um, distress paint in picked raspberry. See, this picked raspberry coming out now. And I put just a little bit of that picked raspberry paint onto my palette. I watered it down a little bit with my fan brush, just added a bit of water so that it's a little more um, splatterable. And then splattered that onto these backgrounds. And it looks a little more like a hot mess, but a, you know, that whole center portion is basically gonna get covered up by the, the like candy cane image. And then I die cut scraps of white cardstock using the Picket Fence Studios More Winter Snowflakes Wait for Dyes, which I used in my last Christmas video too. Yeah. Um, die cut them from white cardstock. And then I stuck these to yet another grip mat. I could have used the one I used in the beginning, but I have them all. And yeah, it, it, I get I start working my way towards the smaller mats, the, the, the filthier my desk gets and the less space I have. <laughs> So that's how I justify having all of them. But, you know, do you need all of them? No, I just, this is welcome to my thought process. Anyway, I stuck them to the grip mat just to hold them in place. And then I grabbed two Distress Oxide inks in Spun Sugar and Picked Raspberry. And then I used my paper pouncers to pounce the ink onto them to create ombre snowflakes. And honestly, I was really happy with how these turned out. I was like, ooh, I just want them to be in shades of pink. Just to, again, pull in the pink. These are just going to be accessories on these cards. But after I did this, I was like, these would just be really nice on a card. Like just, just pink ombre snowflakes. I really liked this. And this part is all in real time. This took no time at all. Um, I've kind of talked about this before. This is a nice way to get around. If you don't have a lot of colored cardstock is you can just use your inks, especially like with little die cuts like this, whether it's snowflakes or sentiments, et cetera, et cetera. You can just 
use white cardstock and then add some ink, whether it be oxide inks or distress inks or whatever inks you've got. You know, you can tint them and add the color and do things like this where you get multi, you know, ombre effects, etc. So I did that to those snowflakes and I trimmed the backgrounds that now the splatter was dry. I trimmed those down to just slightly smaller than what my A2 card base will be. So like four inches by five and a quarter. And then I grabbed a piece of Simon's Doll Pink cardstock, just a scrap of it. You could also just use white cardstock, heat emboss the sentiments, and then apply that uh, picked raspberry ink over it and just wipe off whatever is sitting on top of the heat emboss sentiment. That's also, and I've shown that in videos too. Because again, if you don't have a big stash of color cardstock, that's another way around it. So I heat emboss just little sentiments from that candy cane Christmas set and then I trimmed those down and then I took panels of just thinner white cardstock that I'd also trimmed down to four inches by five and a quarter put those in my misty and I stamped the candy cane image with that same Dublin uh, positively saturated ink and then I lined up the happy holidays sentiment from that same set and it just like nestled in there perfectly and this is what I mean you could totally like stamp this image just directly onto a card front, just as is, not even color it if you don't want to, or heat emboss it. Like I said, it would look gorgeous in gold. Oh, fabulous. And then that sentiment just like nestled in perfectly. It was satisfying. <laughs> but yeah, when I did that, I was like, ooh, this could be a card front if you want to go clean and simple. I love it. Or you could just stamp it and then add just a little bit of color, like just color the bow you know, or just the florals or just the candy, candy, you know, there's, there's so many options. I have too many ideas in my head, you guys. That's why I just ramble in these videos. I'll give you guys all the ideas because I don't have all the time to make all the ideas in my head. <laughs> so I adhered those card panels to the insides of the cards and I made my card bases that same dull pink cardstock. So they're top folding A2 note cards, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I glued those snowflakes um, to the background with craft tacky glue and then the little candy cane image I'm going to pop up with some of Simon's big mama foam tape so it's got just just a little bit of dimension not a whole lot of bulk this card ends up looking a lot more dimensional between like I've got the stamp layers the splatter the bit of stenciling with the um, paper glaze luxe paste the snowflakes and then this candy cane so it just there's a lot going on but it's not super thick and bulky I like that you know it's still pretty easy for me to mail this and then the little sentiment strip I just adhered right on top with some craft tacky glue so I got that into place and then my final little bit of embellishment is these um picket fence nostalgic times embellishment mix it's all this like different sizes of there's like confetti there's even some little like christmas tree confetti and really thin little snowflake bits this would make a really fun flat shaker this mix i was like oh. again you guys i just if someone could invent more hours in a day it would be it'd be wonderful you know or an extra day in the week something anyway picked out the sequins that I wanted because there was some like kind of minty color ones which were perfect <laughs> so pick those out arrange them onto these cards and then I'm just going to adhere them into place with dabs of craft tacky glue and especially with um sequins that have the little holes I just use my like fingernails to straighten them after I press it into the glue and then it just like presses them in good and then they're adhered and they're good to go so I adhered all those little bits where I wanted them and once that was done these cards are complete I've got shine and shimmer and glitter and all the all the fun things all the things I love you know splatter embellishments yeah can't go wrong I love it so like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link to my 2023 holiday playlist in the end screen of the video. For everything I use today, there will be, a, uh, if you expand the description box below the video, I will have all of the supplies listed and linked, as well as a link to my blog post where the pictures and picture links will be. So you can just check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for watching, thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.